Station, this is Rob Navius in Mission Control Houston. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear, Rob. Great to see you, Scott. Uh, it's hard to believe, but your one-year mission is drawing to a close. Uh, it's certainly been an eventful year for you and Mikhail Kornienko. And in looking back, what would you consider to be the most important accomplishments of this year in space, and perhaps the high and low points for you personally? Well, you know, I there's still 10% of the uh, the time remaining, so I don't. Uh, I'm trying not to look at it like it's uh, it's over. So hopefully, uh, you know, things will go smoothly from here on out. We absolutely comp accomplished a uh, incredible amount of work, uh, both on the U.S. operational segment here and the and the Russian segment. They actually, the Russians actually have an EVA going on next week. So uh, you know, we still have some very critical activities to do. But I think by and large, um, you know, our time here has demonstrated. Um, not only the capability for for us to stay in space for a long time and and to do well, but also the capability of the ground teams uh, to support um, us and the systems that keep us alive and the and the resupply, and do this in a way that is you know forward thinking towards a potential flight to Mars. We've uh, collected a lot of data on our time here, and that data is going to be, you know, analyzed later and, uh, you know, research papers written. So, you know, I don't draw any specific conclusions or can draw any specific conclusions from from that. But I think, uh, you know, it's been a been a great success and a, a real privilege to be a part of it. Scott, you mentioned uh, the formulation of a future human mission to Mars. Uh, this one-year mission was all about gathering very important biomedical data in that regard. Do you consider yourself and Mikhail pathfinders of sorts? Sure. Um, I, I guess you could use that term, but I think we all are. You know, uh, you know, all the crew members over the last 15 years, and and even those that came before that. Um, you know, flying in space is a uh, is a, a process. Uh, exploring space is a process that you take step by step. So, uh, you know, on one hand, you know, Misha and I might be at the uh, the front of that uh, right now because we've spent uh, you know a pretty significant amount of time up here. But that uh, in no way uh, takes away from anything that all the previous folks have done you know, towards that future goal of going to Mars. So I think, uh, you know, I think we all are, and as well as the folks on the ground that, that support us in such a great way to do these flights. You said pre-flight that your plan was not to count days or months on a calendar, engaging the passage of time, but to do your best to pace yourself in what amounted to a marathon and not a sprint. Uh, in retrospect, how well do you think you did in that regard, and what lesson uh, would that strategy yield for future long-duration space travelers? You know, I I think I did a pretty good job at it. Um, the, uh, there are, uh, there's certainly a lot left in my, my tank to, to uh, do some stuff if, uh, you know, I need to, to amp up the... Uh, the level of effort here in the next uh, month or so. Um, so I, I do think I, I kept the appropriate amount of reserve. I'm not climbing the walls to, uh, to get out of here, although I do really look forward to returning to Earth for, for many reasons. Um, so I think I've, I've done, a, done a pretty good job. Um, you know, the, the, the downside of that is now I have, uh, you know, a little over 30 days left and there's a lot of stuff I didn't do that uh, I feel like I have the capacity to do now, like personal things um, that I kind of set aside and consciously didn't do because I was managing my, my fatigue level. So um, the advice I would give to, to future folks is, uh, and future people is put a lot of thought into it because a year here is a really, really long time. Scott, your career has spanned missions to serve as the Hubble Space Telescope. You commanded the flight of Barbara Morgan, in which she fulfilled the legacy of the Teacher in Space program, 
and you've conducted groundbreaking work on the International Space Station. How would you sum up your contribution to human spaceflight and ultimately the legacy you will leave after you return to Earth? You know, I've been really fortunate, like you mentioned, to have a, uh, a, a spaceflight career um, that has had uh, some variety to it, um, like you mentioned. Um, and it's, you know, it's a privilege. And I think, you know, part of that is, is timing and, and, you know, luck, uh, certainly preparation and, uh, you know, commitment to what we're doing goes into that. But uh, it's, uh, it's been a real privilege. As far as my, you know, my legacy, I hope I've, uh, you know, added uh, to our space flight program. I know, you know, on the, the flights I've been involved in, they've all been very successful. So at least from a, you know, kind of a technical capability uh you know i've i think i've brought something to the to the table and i hope uh i hope i have too in other ways um you know like but like i said you know to reiterate it's just a you know it's just a privilege to be here looking ahead to landing uh, this will be your second return from the international space station in a soyuz spacecraft what are you looking forward to the most that was new to you 5 years ago during your first descent back to the planet The Soyuz is a pretty exciting ride back to Earth, um, no question about it. And, uh, you know, people that have flown in it previously will try to prepare you for it, but uh, I think uh, nothing really can until you've actually, you know, been there yourself and experienced it. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's definitely an eye-opener, and, and uh, you know, once you get past the, the initial... Uh, um, I don't know, shock of the drug chute opening and all the pyrotechnics of various, uh, you know, firing for various reasons. Certainly the, you know, the coming through the atmosphere or into the atmosphere, the, the plasma that's, uh, you know, right, right next to your head versus feet in front of you in the space shuttle. It definitely gets your attention. It's so, you know, so much fun for me that I had said, uh, you know, after my last flight that if I, if I would have, you know, hated being in space for six months. I would have done it all o over again just for that last 20 minutes in the Soyuz. It's that, uh, it's that type of an experience. So hopefully, uh, you know, by me being able to anticipate what, uh, you know, what's coming, it'll be uh, even more enjoyable this time. Scott, the inevitable question when you touch down in Kazakhstan, uh what will be the first things you'll want to do, the first foods you'll want to eat, your thoughts as you emerge from a year aboard a confined environment? Um, so, you know, it's interesting. I don't, I, I, I look forward to like fresh food, like a salad, believe it or not, stuff like that. Um, but specific things, um, is not as important as like the experience. I, I actually uh, look forward to sitting at a table um, and just relaxing uh, and having a meal with friends and family um, when you don't have to worry about your spoon or your fork or your food floating away and uh, you know dealing with the overhead of that. So it's more the uh, that kind of experience that I'm looking through as far as you know food is concerned. It's more of the, uh, you know, more of the experience and, and, and what I've actually not had to be able to eat up here or could get on earth. Um, the other things I'm looking forward to is, uh, you know, seeing the sky from, from below and, uh, you know, air that is, uh, fresh and, you know, a breeze and a sun, the sun on my face, um, running water, those kind of things people. And finally, Scott, uh, without a doubt, uh, this mission will take a prominent place in the history books when it's complete. Uh, from your perspective, what do you think will be the touchstone, the history-making moment, the legacy of this one-year mission? Well, 
you know, it's hard for me to say right now because I think a lot of, uh, you know, what we're doing here is, uh, you know, because of the science. So um, I'm hoping, I'm hopeful, and I think a lot of other people are, is that we're going we're gonna to learn a lot of uh, information that will help us eventually, you know, continue our, our path towards Mars. You know, Misha and I are only, you know, one uh one data point really or two data points and you know anyone who's a scientist is going to tell you you know you need a lot more uh a lot more and a lot more numbers um to draw specific conclusions but i'm hoping what we find is are areas that we need to investigate further and we could say that you know after so many months we've seen this thing from a you know physiological or or psychological aspect, and we need to take a, a much closer look at this, uh, you know, before we we travel further beyond low Earth orbit for longer periods of time. Scott, I want to thank you for your time uh, today and joining us. Uh, I wish you all the best uh, to fly safe and have a soft landing, and we'll see you soon in Kazakhstan. Appreciate it very much. Yeah, my pleasure, Rob. Look forward to seeing you there. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, JSC Public Affairs Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications.